So we're here today to discuss the incident that occurred yesterday, uh, the fatal bus accident uh, on Pena Boulevard out at DIA. Uh, that happened at approximately 4 p.m. My unit was uh, notified that there was at least one fatality involved and multiple serious bodily injury accidents or uh, injuries. When we arrived, at least 15 uh, people had been transported off of the bus to area hospitals, uh, at least three of the area hospitals, and a number of individuals, uh, either with minor injuries or no injury, remained on scene. And the uh, driver was pronounced deceased at the scene. The investigation involved uh, sending detectives to the area hospitals in addition to the scene and uh, interviewing individuals at DIA to uh, determine what happened in this incident. Now, Sergeant Farr was the on-scene uh, supervisor of that investigation, and I'm going to let him explain to you what he found there. So uh, upon arrival there at the, the uh, airport, uh, came into contact with the, uh, the bus. We discovered that it had made uh, a, uh, where a left turn takes you to level four east. That's normally the passenger pickup area. That bus had left the right side of the roadway and drove into one of the pillars that supports the six east ramp. So it was a raised roadway uh, pillar that, uh, that was struck. Uh, there were several witnesses that were still on scene. They had been uh, removed to the uh, conference center there at the uh, airport, so I had a chance to talk to them after uh, I had an uh, a initial uh, look at the scene. So here's what we learned. We know that there were three buses that were picking up students. They are legacy high school students, and they are part of the football program, uh, along with some coaches, some adult chaperones, parents, uh, grandparents, so a number of adults and uh, students distributed throughout all three buses. Our bus that was involved in the crash was the lead bus, meaning that was the, the bus that was uh, initially uh, leaving the uh, terminal building, heading out on Pena Boulevard. I'm told by uh, witnesses that they were ready to go home. That is, they were to take Pena Boulevard to uh, E-470 and back up to Broomfield, where they were going to be dropping off at the uh, school. Uh, instead of leaving uh, Pena uh, outbound, the bus driver uh, took the return to terminal loop. So there's uh, multiple lanes of Pena Boulevard as you leave the terminal. There are three lanes that permit a right turn, take you outbound Pena. Two lanes uh, to take you to the return to terminal loop. One of those lanes is shared by both the right and left turn. So if you can uh, imagine that fork, if you are in lane number two, that is numbering them from left to right, that lane number two has an option of turning left or right. The other lanes are must turns. So the bus was in that lane. And instead of making the right turn to outbound Pena, made the left turn onto the return to terminal. My question for my witnesses there at the scene was why? Was something forgotten? Do we know why that occurred? And no one knows for certain. There were a lot of guesses. A lot of folks thought, well, maybe we forgot something, forgot a student, forgot some equipment. But nobody could tell me certainly why the bus driver made that turn. As they approached then the uh, forks that take you from 4 East to 6 East or 5 East, if you have commercial motor vehicle permission to enter 5 East, as those three forks come up, the bus driver remained to the right, which would have taken them to 4 East. And instead of making that final turn, drove off the roadway and straight into a pillar. Now the scene evidence showed us that the bus did make a straight line movement to that pillar. That is, in the dirt, the tire tracks did not show any sign of left or right turns, uh, simply drove straight off the roadway into that pillar. That's how the crash occurred. What we're left with now is trying to explain why this crash occurred. Quite frankly, there's, there's a big mystery there that um, we are in the process of attempting to uh, answer, and we may not get all the answers we're looking for there, simply because one of our most important witnesses, and that is the driver of the bus, was declared deceased as a result of this crash. So we're now left with mechanical inspection of the bus. Was there anything wrong mechanically with the bus? Uh, I have a certified bus inspector who is taking on that task. As we speak, he's preparing that uh, task, so we should have that inspection uh, started underway sometime today. 
There's also then the uh, case of, uh, as we've uh, speculated, was this bus driver having difficulty that is a, a medical condition? Well, now we've got to start looking at background, speaking to family and friends and doctors if we can get them to talk to us. Do we know anything about medical condition at the time of the crash or leading up to it? So that's gonna be additional follow-up. We don't have those answers yet either. And uh, as difficult as it may be, uh, was this an intentional act? Was it purposeful? There's certainly no evidence for me to believe that, but certainly it's one of the things we have to be open to, is, is this an intentional act? And, and quite frankly, we don't have solid answers to any of those questions. Any questions about the scene evidence or uh, what we learned there at the scene? You know, those measurements were taken by my detectives. Uh, I haven't reviewed those, so I don't know what they are. I would say probably two school bu uh, bus lengths. It, it appears as though I could have placed that same school bus uh, behind itself and not made the roadway. So I would say about uh, the lengths of two school buses. Interesting question. We, we've had the opportunity to ask uh, many of the uh, witnesses who have been driving, and I, I rely on their experience as, as folks who, who have some experience behind the wheel. How fast do you think the bus was going for folks who were actually on that bus and folks who were following it? And I got a very consistent answer of 30 to 40 miles an hour for most everybody. Um, and there's evidence at the scene that certainly supports that. Um, is 30 to 40 miles an hour appropriate for that section? Uh, no. Uh, my uh, best recollection of traveling that myself is that uh, we are down to about 15 miles an hour for that section as we are getting to uh, uh, the uh, Four East level where again we're going to have folks walking. So uh, speed limits have been brought down very far. Now when I say 15 miles an hour that's my recollection. It may be that if we go up there and traverse it we'll find that I'm wrong but we do know it was lower than 30 or 40 miles an hour is the posted speed limit for that section. Did the driver die as a result of the injuries of the crash or do you think died you know, there's certainly no way for me to know that, absolutely. The crash was significant, um, and the injuries to, to the driver significant. Now, does that mean medically uh, there was an issue and she was deceased prior to that? I don't know that we'll ever be able to find that out. I, I certainly have had that discussion with our coroners in cases similar to this, um, and sometimes the condition of the body post-crash does not permit them to say for sure that there was a medical issue either in the heart or even the brain. So it may be the body is simply not in condition for us to know that in this case. What about the distraction, um, whether it be like the phone or even people yelling, hey, you're going the wrong way or something like that? Well, I, I will share with you that uh, I've had, uh, again, conversations with uh, uh, more than uh, 15 people who were on that bus. A and we covered that. Tell me about the condition of the driver as you were heading off road. Tell me. Was there any discussion? And uh, all of them say that um, it seemed to be a normal trip up until they started to feel the bumps of going off-road. And then shortly thereafter, there was the impact. And that uh, there was no statements or no conversation with the bus driver about where are we going. Um, and there was no uh, outburst that they reported to me. So from this standpoint, that part's a mystery. Any indication runs? We won't know that until the coroners now uh, uh, the toxicology report will come back. It's that's usually about a six to eight week waiting period, so we are awaiting those. What about the bus driver's situation? I mean, I know that they, what kind of things do they do physically? What kind of Well, there uh, is a requirement for a physical. Uh, they have to be cleared to have a uh, commercial driver's license, a CDL. Um, we are working with the school district to uh, obtain those records. When was her last? Uh, medical evaluation and what were the results of that so we're awaiting those and the school district has been fully cooperative with us so let me let me say that that uh, uh, Adams 12 has been very cooperative with us and, and they are assisting in this investigation really at this point we've uh, allowed them uh, an opportunity to come to terms with what they're dealing with we will uh, insert ourselves and we will have that conversation, but we want to be respectful to what they're going through right now. That's going to be part of our mechanical inspection to determine that, so I don't know yet. Certainly if, if there is some, it would become part of the case.
You, you know, I uh, I have to say, I, I drive to the airport. I fly in and out of there all the time myself. I certainly don't have any difficulty from a personal standpoint. Um, from a professional standpoint, I know that we have collisions out there. Most of them relate to uh, human error. So uh, is there an engineering problem out there? Uh, I don't know that I'm qualified to say that. I would say that all the crashes that I have to respond out there to have some element of uh, human misadventure that causes most of the crashes. So, so would that be maybe indication that she may have been confused by a traffic pattern? That's part of the background. How many times has she taken this trip? I don't know the answer to that yet. Is this her first time or is this her 10th time? So that would certainly go to answer that question. I don't know that. You know, the uh, damage was so significant, I didn't get a chance to review that yet. I don't know the answer to that. But uh, understand that uh, at the reported speed of 35 miles an hour, I'm striking a, a brick wall that had no give. The crush damage to the front of the bus, bus was significant. And uh, as a result of that, it was very difficult to get in there. I left the scene prior to uh, the full extraction, so I didn't have a play part in that. My detectives would know that, and obviously they're still out conducting some of that background. It is. Our uh, bus driver is a uh, female in her 40s. We're not ready to release her any more information about her identity uh, just yet. Um, I've had a detective who was able to review some of the video at the AOB, and he uh, does not report uh, any interference with any other vehicles. Uh, the ones I see are severe because that's my job as a traffic investigator. Uh, it, it would take a, uh, a look at all the accident reports filed out there to know that. I do know that you know we have automobiles and pedestrians interacting on at least four levels out there, if not actually six, if you include the commercial motor vehicle level. And uh, at, at times, through distraction or just carelessness, humans and vehicles will come into contact with the, each other just from the way that uh, we, we cross those lanes traffics to get from parking into the terminal building. So I would say a vast majority of those don't need me, so they're probably not uh, uh, as severe as this one, certainly.